Okay, so here's the, here's the thought process. Uh, I use these three different soaps. Adams, Sescarage, my decon soap, and then Meguiar's Hyperwash. So I, am, I fall victim to this just as much as anyone, where specs tend to enter into my thought process probably a little bit more than it should. Uh, so these products, I don't, I mean, I know the published specs, uh, but I use it in the real world. So I put it on my car uh, and I try it, just like with pressure washers or leaf blowers or, or uh, um, uh, a drying aid or a sealant or a wax. There's observed real world testing you know, not wiping Dawn on the hood or, or using all-purpose cleaner to, to do uh, testing to see if it works. Uh, but actual, put it on your car, drive it around, or put a pressure washer on the wall and use it for six months uh, type of, type of real-world results. But sometimes it's nice to confirm or to, if you have a curiosity for this, which I do, what is the, what is the actual soap, what is the pH, uh, of, of the product and you know and then what what am I observing how does that how does that relate to what I'm observing in the real world so what you're gonna see here is a rewind so the video is gonna pick up where I, uh, I started this yesterday so I have a different outfit on than I did yesterday uh, same shorts Michelle yells at me for uh, for having to wash too much laundry so same shorts but uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test the pH of the raw soap without any dilution. And then I'm gonna test it diluted, and you'll see me kind of fumble through as I learn how this pH meter tends to work. I have a Milwaukee, I just bought this Milwaukee MW102, which from what I understand is a really high quality uh, pH device for you know, a $150, $120 uh, device. Uh, pretty accurate, uh, but you'll see me kind of learn that I, you need to you need to baseline and restart the machine in between each test. Uh, and we see some interesting results. Uh, and uh, I'm also going to be talking with, uh, I'll talk with Dave Phillips, who's a chemist at, uh, at uh, P&S. He gives, give me a little bit of insight as uh, some of the results that I find are a little bit odd. Uh, but what this, this pH test, the reason why I'm doing this is the Meguiar's Hyperwash, which I've been using for several months, which I really like, I've been using on my waxed M3, which is behind us here. Uh, I haven't experienced any kind of stripping. I haven't experienced any residue, uh, but I have ex experienced a little bit better cleaning capability than my beloved Adams car shampoo. But I get fearful of the specifications in that Meguiar's, I believe, publishes this at a pH of nine uh, because it's so hyper in its current state and because it's so hyper concentrated. Uh, the recommended dilution is 400 to 1. I don't know what the recommended dilution on this stuff is, but it's much, much less, something like, like 100 to 1 or 150 to 1, something like that. So this is a hyper, hyper concentrated version of the soap. You use a lot less soap, uh, and, and I'm experiencing similar, if not slightly better, foaming capability. Uh, I use a lot less of it. It costs a lot less. Uh, it doesn't smell as good. Uh, but the question is, is what's the, you know, what's the pH of this? Because I don't want it to strip. Now, I haven't observed any stripping, um, but what is it that I'm seeing in the real world versus uh, what, you know, what, what the, the meter tells me here? And I'm just curious. I don't know what, what this is going to do for us other than maybe give us a little, another example of specifications on the box or on the bottle uh, aren't quite as useful it's just one part of the thought process, one part of the equation. You know, we've observed that when we tested lots and lots and lots of pressure washers. I don't intend to test tons of soap. I'm just doing this out of curiosity for myself in that I have this apprehension to transition to using this soap full time uh, because of its published pH spec, but yet I love the real world performance. And so what is the pH of this decontamination soap? Because the real world performance of this is that I do notice that it strips you know, quite a bit. It'll pull waxes and sealants pretty, pretty well. But 
it doesn't affect my hands, doesn't harm my hands, and doesn't tend to beat me up, uh, and doesn't uh, doesn't bleed or have issues with trim, plastic, and things like that. So let's get into testing. I'm going to rewind back to to, to, to yesterday uh, where I did the initial testing. Uh, what I'm going to do to wrap up the video is I went and got some distilled water uh, so we can take the the tap water out of the equation and see if we observe some different results. Okay, me and Katie Bell are working on a science experiment here. So I got a new fancy pH meter. So I got a pH meter. This is a Milwaukee pH tester. I got it in some tap water, just some cleaning solution. So what I want to see is what is the pH of Adam's car soap? Hyperwash, Meguiar's Hyperwash, uh, and then my Decon soap just right out of the bottle. I think it's so the first thing we want to do is we want to check the pH here. Then what I want to do, I want to test the pH of the water diluted in the foam can. And then what we should probably should do is test the pH. Uh, I don't know that it really matters much in the soap bucket, so I don't, I don't think I'm going to test that. Okay, ready, Katie? But which one should we test first? I think we should orange, test orange. That one. Purple? Yes. Um, the best. You say purple. Let's for do last. let's do purple or blue first. Yeah, I okay. would do blue. First. Okay, so we're gonna test Adam's soap, undiluted, straight up. So let's turn our pH tester on. Mm -hmm. Let's clean this off. Actually, we need to get a towel. Adam's soap and your soap. Yeah. Just use is better. Well, not better, but what type of soap? How much? Get this junk out of here. Okay. So we got this. Okay. Let's put our towel down like this. Good job. Now, we need to dry these off. Just get the water off of them, just so we have an equal test. Can I try? Yep. Just dry that off. Yes. Okay. Now, I need you to put both of these probes in this soap solution. So, let me get this out of the way for you. So put that probe in there and put the other probe in there like this. Okay. Now we're going to watch the meter. What's it say, Kate? Um. See the hourglass is still going. You guys can see that. So what's that say? What's that number? Three numbers. Seven, yeah. five, no. Wait, what's the first five? one? Seven, two, six. So a pH of 7.26 is what the uh, what the Adam soap undiluted is. What's Kay. the best if it's higher or lower? So now we need to really clean these out. So I should probably take it over. So we need to get all the soap off of there. Okay. Dad. I think we should do um, purple now. No, I think we should do orange. Purple, purple. Orange. Save purple. For you you want to do purple? Purple. Or, yeah, best. Or should we save for purple for last? Yeah. Should we save purple for last? No. Yeah. Alright, clean that off for me. Last is all Get all that soap I'll off of there. One. No. Done. Okay, this one's got some gunk on there. We need to get that one real good. We gotta be real careful with this though, because it's sensitive. That's a temperature probe. Okay, so we're gonna do orange yeah. next. Okay, I okay. can I put this one yeah, in? Yeah, put that in there. Alright, you put it in next. Okay, so I was talking to the guys at McGuire's and the pH of this is a little higher. So the question is when we dilute this in water at room temperature, what's the pH going to be? I don't want the pH to be so high that it's going to strip my soap or strip my wax. So we got a pH of 7.88. So slightly alkaline for hyperwash. That's actually less than I thought it was going to be. Okay. What's better, higher or lower? Well, it depends on what you're trying to do, Rye. So when we're doing regular car washing, we want it to be as close to seven as possible. Now we'll see what our decon soap is. So pH is affected by temperature as well. So if we have a higher or lower temperature outside, that'll also affect your pH to some extent. This is the best. So the pH of our water here was 7.2 out of the tap. Not surprising. This is a pH of 8. 8.18, so that's the pH 
undiluted of our decon soap. So now what I'm going to do is mix it up in the way I normally do. So I normally do decon soap. I do 150 mLs in about, uh, and we'll keep this sample size the same, about 700 and, what is that, seven? So that's, if that's a thousand, that's 250. So that must be 800, 800 mLs. So I'm gonna do 150 mLs of soap and uh, 800 mLs of water, just tap water right out of the tap. So we can take these out. We need another sample cup, but so let's do our Atom soap first. So let's not waste our soap. Let's put this in here since I'm gonna waste a bunch of it. <laughs> a smart idea is mixing it all. Yeah. Try that. Yeah. <laughs> put it all together? Yeah. yeah. That's a smart idea? Yeah. That's a crazy. Wash the car better. Yeah. That's a crazy idea to me. Yeah, well, do, it, do, wash it, the car do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Yeah, do it, do it, so it looks rainbow. Do it, do it. All right, let me go fill this up with water. Okay, so I'm gonna mix this up. Mix this up really well. Right, go ask grandma, I need another cup. Okay, so I actually have this filled to about 850 milliliters total. So I'm just gonna dump some of this out into, into a cup and then test the pH. Thank you, ma'am. Come on over, come back over. I need you for my experiment. You gotta put this back in. So, this will give us an idea of what the pH will be oh. of our foam can in water. Temperature. Can I put it put the, in? Put it in there, yep. Ryan, why do we do silly faces? So the pH of our water is 7.2. Something doesn't time. seem right here. So this increased our pH to 7.8. That wouldn't make any sense. Let's mix up our hyperwash. Let me just retest this. So we're a pH tested of seven there. And then just dry this off. Put this in our hyperwash again. And our measured pH with the solution alone, 7.77, 7.80, 7.80, just like we measured, observed before. I'm gonna put less soap. So I don't put 150 milliliters of soap of the hyperwash. I do half of that. You know, I'm less interested in testing the soap and more interested in testing what I, how I'd actually use it. If that makes sense. Because this is considerably more concentrated than atoms. The thing I can't figure out is why in the world am I getting higher pH when diluting with water. And I'll show you, I tested the pH of the water, it was, what, 7.2. Gosh, the concentration of this soap is insane. I use half as much and barely mix it. I can probably use less. It's got a new cup here. Some hyperwash. I've figured out that I have to restart this to get an accurate reading. So that doesn't make sense. Maybe one of you scientists can help me. I'm at 7.99. The pH of all these soaps are rising as I'm diluting them. And I'll show you the tap water in a minute here. So that's 8.04, 8.05. Yeah, so 8.05 is their pH versus Adam's soap of 7.36. So that's our foam con can cannon concentration, 8.05. Zero it out again. Double check the pH of our tap water. 7.22, 7.21, 7.42. So that's our, so that would make sense. 7.42 is the pH. That's still climbing here. It's because the temperature keeps rising in the room here. 7.54, we'll let that settle here while I mix up my next solution of decon soap. Now this, I'll mix 150 mLs. 
7.61 is our actual pH. So that would make sense why the atom soap is affecting the pH of the water. It's bringing it down from 7.61 to 7.36. The soap was 7.2. What doesn't explain to me if the soap, if our hyperwash is 7.8 and our diluted solution is, is 8.05, why is the pH rising when I'm diluted? That doesn't make sense to me. So we got clean probes. Let's get a new reading here. We'll let that settle. We have a test of our decon soap. Actually gonna turn it off, start over. Okay, that makes a little more sense. Uh, the pH of our decon soap is 8.37. Yeah, settled at 8.35. I just needed to reset. You can't, I can't go, I have to, can't go back and forth like I have been. Just need to wash these off. Is this going to raise our pH? And then I'm gonna to have to go consult Google. Turn it off. Here, turn it on. Right, it should, our pH should fall. So I'm gonna retest that hyperwash again. 7.74. So that hyperwash reading just doesn't seem right. Temperature's risen a little bit in here, so it's gone from 8.05 to 8.2. Hello, is this Matt? Yeah, Dave, how's it going? Hey, how are you? So I have a conundrum. I need you to help me answer this. Okay. So I took a soap. I bought a, uh, let's see, I bought a Milwaukee pH, MW102 pH meter. Okay. And so I'm trying to figure out the pH of soap. Okay. So is I take soap, soap, or detergent soap. This or? is this is McGuire's Hyperwash. Okay. So it's a pretty heavily concentrated soap. Right. So I take this the raw soap. I just dump it in a cup, and I get a pH of seven point eight. Okay. And then I take the soap and I dilute it. So I take right. I put one hundred and fifty mL of soap, and I put um, uh, seven hundred mL of water. Yeah, so I have an 850 ml solution, okay. and I mix it up, and I dump it in a cup, and I get a pH of 8.05. Now my tap water has a pH of 7.6. <laughs> so how could I have a how greater... How that happen? Yeah, how does that work? That is weird, I think. And I tested it like seven times. And I've got a, you know, and I've got a, a, um, a buffer, like a buffer you reference got a buffer solution. And all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I don't understand how that's possible. <laughs> how is that? And I, well, I, I will tell you that they teach like entire college courses on pH. <laughs> right. It's uh, you know, I mean, when then every time you take a new class, like you take, you know, biochemistry, then they spend like two and a half weeks on pH, and then when yeah. you take, you know. Quantitative analysis, they spend like two and a half weeks on pH because it really is not an e it's a deceptively easy sounding yet complex um, thing. But that being said, it is really only, you know, the, the it should be measuring the hydrogen ion concentration mm -hmm. um, in the solution. And, you know, you could be getting some sort of buffering activity. Um, I'm just, you know, kind of thinking off the top of my head here, where you're pulling, like if they have, so they could be, like if they have some chelate, uh, which I'm sure they do, um, in the soap, they could be actually um, chelating some of the hard water out of the water and, you know, changing the pH by pulling the activity, the, that, those ions out of solution, which are then, you know, freeing up or, you know, freeing up hydroxide ions or, you know, half a dozen other things that would have been held on to by something else. I'm th you know, that's, that is a possibility because buffering, you know, buffering and then, um, you know, ionic activity, basically when you start diluting things out, so, we, okay, so if you've got a weak acid or a weak base, mm -hmm. What happens is, in their strong concentration, it's always an equilibrium. 
All right, I'm think I'm 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 going back to my basic chemistry here, and I'm, I'm um, and it's always in equilibrium. And what happens is, you know, you've got hydroxide ions that are stuck; they can't get into solution because it's in equilibrium, and the equilibrium is forcing them to stay attached to the molecule that they're that the the salt that they're attached to. When you start diluting it out, what happens is this is called the pKa the ionic concentration mm -hmm. they can then start to dissolve into solution and then they and then they're then they're measurable then they show up in the pH hmm. um, that seems like that seems like a very plausible scenario. Well, well, this is a particularly um, odd soap in that it, you know, their recommended dilution is four hundred to one. It's a hyper concentrated soap. Right. You know. So, what you really should do is, you know, take the 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 calcium and the hard water mm -hmm. out of the equation. Get some distilled and do water. It with DI water. Yeah. yeah so distilled yeah. water. Okay. Because. You've got too many variables. Mm, okay, that's a good call. Yeah, I'm going to go buy some uh, distilled water and that, that, and that's... And then, then you should start seeing something that is, um, you know, predict more, a little bit more predictable. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, I mean, these guys, if they're, if they're making a soap that can dilute out 400 to 1, um, well, there's a couple things. They, they've got it, they've either, and they probably are, they're probably using... You know, detergent materials that are not very susceptible to hard water, but then they're going to, you know, but then there is a certain amount of susceptibility when you're diluted out that far. You know, you've got to get the most you can out of those out of those detergent molecules. You don't want to be stuck on, you know, some calcium or magnesium that's in the water and taken out and, and re which removes their activity mm -hmm. from the process. So you want to make, you know, you're probably what you're going to do is. You know, if you're formulating, you're going to put a chelate in there to grab, you know, preferably grab hold of those calcium, magnesium, and iron or whatever ions that they can out of the solution, so that the detergents are then still free to do their job as efficiently as they can. Hmm. Fascinating. Yeah, because because the other thing I've noticed in the real world is I've used this soap. And I've used, I've got my whatever stripping soap. My stripping soap actually tested uh, 8.35 was the was the pH. Mm -hmm. So would it be the detergent in that soap that because I would have thought it would have been a much higher pH in order to strip? Um, not necessarily. It really depends on no. I mean because you could you know you could get some. Okay, 20 years ago, yes, that would be the case. You'd, ha you'd have to have a pH of 10 in order to get it done. You, do. you would, yeah. you know, you would build alkalinity. You would, um, you would use some pretty standard, um, uh, you know, detergent molecules that were available back then. But now, because of a lot, of, because of the, you know, ecological um, rules and regulations that are coming in, they're 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 building these rather um, unique. Um, they're called non-ion detergents. Um, that have you know good biodegradability and and a lot of activity at lower pHs mm -hmm. instead of having to depend on the alkalinity to boost up your detergency they can you can just you know you can just get these kind of pretty cool molecules that that do an amazing job I mean and and the other thing the other reason is because um, when they got rid of the VOC requirements what they used to do a lot was they they would um, we rely on uh, like glycol ethers and some water soluble solvents to try and decrease things along with the you know the alkalinity and the detergency of the of the detergents they were using. And when they said no, you can't use all that glycol ether anymore by lowering the VOC regulations, they had to kind of rethink things. They went back and I'm, I mean I've got you know non ionic detergents that. Um, are formulated in as, as trained, you know, they originally were trained degreasing. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you, you know, they, you know, when you look at the testing, of course they have standardized soil, but, you know, they drip it on there, they let it sit for a while, and then they rinse this basically soot looking soil, and it takes off like 95%. Hmm. So without the alkalinity, you do need some, you do need some, um, some salts of sorts in there, but you don't need, you don't need the alkalinity. Hmm.
distilled water is going to be my yeah because yeah. my, my results my results are tainted here and that what i was attempting to do is recreate what would the ph be with your tap water that you're going to you be well, using on your car sure so and this is what um you know this is what they're they're assuming people are using tap water yeah. so obviously the detergent is built to work in tap water but um you know, when you're trying to do, you know, something that's refined as a pH, yeah. Um, you know, it's they, they're, you know, they don't, they don't at, at the use dilution. They're looking performance. They don't, and in, and in with all the different waters that are out there, they're not going to be able to predict what that pH is going to be and the location it is each time anyway. So they probably don't care. What they really care about is performance. So the key takeaway here is just because you have a higher pH doesn't mean it's going to damage your wax. Uh, or or no. just, just because you have a low pH doesn't mean that it can't strip your wax. Right. I mean, uh, you know, within neutral-ish pHs, so, you know, within the range of 5 to, say, 8, you know, or 8.5, you know, you're, you're not going to really, you know, you're not going to get a lot of... Um, chemical activity with waxes and sealant products um at the at the concentrations that they're that, you know that we're talking about because basically waxes and sealant products are supposed to be fairly impervious to those sorts of um things anyway because yeah rainwater is going to be yeah rain, yeah got, you know you've got strange ph's when your car is being watered by the sprinklers and all sorts of stuff yeah so they you know you pick the materials that are sitting on the surface of a car because they don't react to those things and if they did yeah. they wouldn't they wouldn't be a, you know worth worth using awesome i'm just it's fascinating i bought it you know i bought a 200 dollars ph meter and i start mixing up all kinds of beakers here and i'm like ah let me this doesn't make any sense to me how i could gain ph how ph would increase when i have two two you know solutions that are of a lower ph so I take water that's a 7.6 and the soap is 7.8. How am I getting 8.05? How is that even possible? So yeah. I was like, yeah, it is. I mean, to actually, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm just hypothesizing. It would be really cool, you know, to find out the real reason why that would happen. Yeah. Um, but it is it, possibly locked into the secrets of the formula. Very you know, likely, the, right? The yeah. chemist that made the thing might scratch his head and go. Oh yeah, check that out. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, cool. Um, That's cool. But uh, for those of us that just see liquid in the bottle, you know, unless you know what they put in there, yeah, you know, it's really hard to tell. So the key takeaway here is, I was getting, um, you know, pH isn't the uh, isn't the whole story. Right. It doesn't. It gives it. It's some. It's a reference point, but it doesn't tell the whole story. Right. Fascinating. Right. right. And the fact that they what did you say their 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 product started off at seven point eight? Uh yeah, seven point eight oh. Yep. So that is not um you know, that's not real it's not really high enough for um an anionic detergent, which would be basically the sort of remember when we did this, I noticed you didn't put it in our, our picture because I think <laughs> that was a terrible job I did but uh, in the in the little video but um, it's not high enough for an anionic detergent so they're probably using a combination of um, you know either non-ionic um, there's a thing called amphoteric surfactants that are have both charges um, and they're probably using that combination because if you use an anionic detergent at 7.8 it's pretty good but there's a chance that it might lose solubility and turn cloudy over time. Mm. There's a few. There's a few issues with that, that makes depending sense. on the anionic detergent. Fascinating. Well, cool. Well, thanks for your time. I wanted to. I was like, man, sure. who can I need to phone a friend on here because my brain just exploded all over my table here. And, um, <laughs> I thought this was going to be really simple. I think. I think. Yeah. I think you ran into something that's very. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah that's and, and surprising. Well, hopefully the McGuire's engineers will watch it and then call me and give me some inside information. I suspect that's not going to happen. Cool. Okay. All right. All right, brother. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. All right, Bye. See ya. All right. So I'm going to come back to this tomorrow. 
and uh, I'm going to get some distilled water. I'm going to come back to this and redo this test uh, and fact, take one of the factors out of the equation. Uh, but I was really perplexed and I have had to walk away from this a couple of times just doing some searching, trying to figure out, you know, what the heck's going on here? What is this, what is this data that I'm pulling? What does this actually mean? Uh, and Dave answered it really pretty simply for me. It's, you know, the pH doesn't tell, isn't the, you know, the only part of the equation. It's not the only thing. Uh, there's actual, you know, real world performance. What are the detergents, surfactants? What is the combination of the, of the products that, that make up the soap? What are they intended to do? And then what is the real world testing? So despite the fact that one soap is a pH of seven or eight or 8.2, it uh, doesn't tell the whole story. Uh, so let's get some more factual, more accurate results by taking the tap water, the hard water out of the equation. Uh, I'll get, capture, capture that tomorrow morning. Okay, on to day two, got my distilled water. So let's get our pH set here. Just find our baseline. Okay, so we've got, I've got distilled water in the cup here. Check what our distilled water pH is. That ain't no good. Get a new buffer solution. I got some distilled water, which I'm getting a pH of seven and a half. No, it should be a pH of seven. So let's just recalibrate our machine with our calibrated buffer solution. So that's a pH of seven. There's a pH of four. Let's take this out, dry these off. Start with seven, calibrate. So we're gonna reset the machine, get it, get it uh, defaulted from scratch. So we have nice untainted data on our distilled water test. I mean, this is older distilled water. Maybe it's leached some from the plastic, but it was a sealed, unopened container. All right, so there's, we'll confirm that. Now we swap out our solution, go to four. Okay, so now we're calibrated. Let's take and put this back in our seven, so we should get pH of seven. Okay, 6.98, good. The temperature could have fluctuated between now and then, so it's close enough. So let's turn it off. Let's put in our distilled water, and let's get a reading. So that doesn't do us any good if we have distilled water that has a pH the exact same as the water here, 7.57. The tap water was 7.61. That doesn't help us. Okay, it's many, many, many hours later and I'm back at it. So let's get this thing zeroed out again. I got some fresh distilled water because what I learned is that I'd never even looked at it, but this 4, 14, 18, so this is like two and a half year old bottle of water and it's become alkaline. And so let's just stick this in our, in our pH neutral solution, see where we're at. Might need to recalibrate. So let's go calibrate, confirm, confirm. Okay, so that's confirmed. It should be pH neutral, DI or uh, distilled water. There we go, pH of seven. Good, okay. So now we got that, got that, uh, whatever. I don't know why it's still moving here, but shoot. Let me make sure, get this normalized. Why is it heading to seven and a quarter? God dang it. I'm gonna dump this out, get a new batch. It's got a new cup right here. New cup, new batch of water. What the heck is going on with this thing? Why is it heading to eight? I'm just stick this in the darn jug. Although I'm gonna contaminate it, I don't really care. Okay, so we got our water at 7.18. That's distilled water at 7.18. So now I'm gonna take, turn this off, take my foam cannon, Somehow has water in it. Dump that on the floor. Let's take our Adam's soap. So this isn't gonna change a whole heck of a lot. See my 150 mils, mLs of soap. I probably could do a calculation, but I just wanna stick with the 
the numbers here. And fill it up to 850. Take this and shake it up. So I'm making a rather large sample for just a regular test. Dump some liquid in there. Dang, it stopped calling me. And then we'll put this in here. See what we got. We're going to have some funky number. There's no way it's 7.47. God dang it. There's no way the pH goes up. 7.01 on the dot. Let's put it in our acid. 4.16, 4.13. So we're probably have a little leftover of the pH neutral solution. Now, going into my soap. All right, so I don't know what the heck to think of this here. So the distilled water is a pH of 7.19. And I'm getting a reading here on the Adam soap of 7.48, which is 0.12 pH higher than it was when I used it with tap water that had a pH of 7.61. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. I've tested, tested, and retested. This meter should be pretty darn accurate. So, I don't know. So I guess let's run, uh, let's run a quick test with hyperwash, and I'll probably chalk it up to, uh, yeah, I'm interested to see what happens with hyperwash using, uh, using um, pH neutral water. I've rinsed this out about as thoroughly as I can. Now remember, I'm doing half the solution here because this is more concentrated. You could probably do even less Okay, there we go. So what I will be testing in the future is using even less hyperwash. We'll take our distilled water, fill it up to 850. If you want to get real fancy, you should wash your car with distilled water. It's a joke. I guess that would be very similar to deionized water. Just let that kind of bubble down here for a second. Screw it, it's gonna make a mess. My patience for this has grown thin, considering it's now 3.30 in the afternoon. I planned on this being like a 15 minute project yesterday. There's our soap solution. Turn this back on. Let's see what happens. To our hyper wash. Nothing other than somehow we gain a little bit more alkalinity. 8.13, 8.14, 8 8.14, instead of 8.05. Okay, so the hard water really isn't affecting us very much. Um, I'm not even gonna do the decon soap, it's kind of pointless. You get the idea here, the results are gonna be pretty much the same because the you know the pH of the distilled water really hasn't hasn't affected us much. So let's let's wrap up these results. All right class. So what have we learned today? Our little sheet of uh, scribble. And the answer is basically nothing. So I I don't know. I spent way too much time on this fumbling with the darn distilled water and trying to figure out what the heck's happening. So the the interesting thing which we talked about at nauseum in this video was the was that I saw, no matter how many times I mixed it or tested it, and I did a bunch of stuff off camera, uh, that I, I kept seeing a higher pH with hyperwash uh, than, than I would with the soap alone when I, dis when I diluted it, which is just odd. So uh, the pH for decon soap is lower than I assumed, that you know, it's 7.75 when diluted, uh, and then Adams is sort of what I expected, a 7.36. But then I saw higher pH when mixed with distilled water. That's 7.48. So there's probably some discrepancy here, but you know, again, I could take the probe and put it in the buffer solution every single time and get an accurate reading. So I don't, I don't know what the heck's going on, but um, unless the buffer solution is off, but I don't think it is. So I, I think the key takeaway for me, I just wanted an idea of where these are, give or take two, three, four tenths of a uh, of um, a pH level. 
uh, I don't think it really, um, I don't think it matters as much. And that, that's what I was hoping to prove here. And I was a little shocked. I thought the decon soap would be a much higher pH. Uh, so whatever, whatever um, degreasers, surfactants, the detergents that are in there, uh, whatever detergent they put in it is, um, I mean, it clearly, like if I put it on my M3, it would, it would, it would go flat. You know, and, it, and it's not just soap residue because I've tested it before where I try to just do extra rinse or extra wipe down and the water is still flat. So the, you know, the sealant or wax is largely removed from it. Uh, so the difference between pH and real world use and what my, or what my conceptions were on what it meant, uh, I just have a little bit more um, understanding. I don't know that I have clarity, but a little more understanding of how it works. But I just thought it'd be an interesting exercise that I was over there on the other table playing with this, and I'm like, you know what? I should probably turn the camera on. Uh, and I was expecting to get more definitive. This is this, and this is that. Uh, I didn't. They were all a pH of around three or four tenths from each other. Uh, so that that was a little bit um, a little bit odd, or not what I expected. But uh, in general, uh, it makes you know the 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 results that I got make sense. Uh, I, it makes some sense of, of, of what they are and, and what they do, and and it really just tells me that you know pH doesn't tell the whole story. Anyway, thanks for watching this little uh, goofy science experiment. Sorry I don't have any real definitive results for you, but uh, interesting to me at least. Uh, so hopefully it was of some interest to you. Anyway, as always, uh, stay tuned for more crazy. I've got more uh, mad scientist experiments to work on here soon. Thanks for watching.